Ciao, buongiorno. Uh, mi chiamo Andrew. Yeah, if you could imagine, I actually won the bronze medal at Italian when I was in like eighth grade. I don't even know what that really means, bronze medal. Uh, but it was something where they were giving out awards in school. And somehow I got the bronze medal in Italian when I was in uh, middle school. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think they regret giving that to me now. Anyway, um, what am I going to do here? We're going to find the domain of the following rational function of x squared plus 4, which is being divided then by x squared minus 2x minus 8. So how do we find the domain? Well, in order to kind of focus your thought process, you want to ask yourself a question whenever you're asked about domain. What you want to think about is, are there any values of x that's going to make this function do some wacky things? In other words, are there any values of x that I can't plug in that's going to make the function become, I don't know, infinite or won't make sense? Can I take the radical of a negative number? I know there's no radicals in here, but all those questions kind of go through your mind. So I look at this then in a three-step process. Look at the numerator, look at the denominator, and then look at the overall function. So in terms of the numerator, are there any restrictions about x here? Can I plug in, Are there meaning, are there any numbers I'm not allowed to plug in for x here that's not going to make sense? Well, no, you can plug in any value for x because you can square any number, 0, negative 1, negative 2, positives, right? It doesn't make a difference. And then you're adding 4 to it, so there's really no restrictions about x in the numerator. Good. Then move on to the denominator. So then I'm going to look at the function I have down here, and I'm going to ask myself, are there any restrictions on this one? And again, no, I can kind of plug in any value I want for x here, right? There's no restrictions. I'm not considering the overall function yet. There's no restrictions here for x. I can plug in anything and square it. I'll get a real value. I can plug in anything here. I got subtractions. No big deal. But when you look at then the overall function, are there any values you're not allowed to divide the numerator by? In other words, is there any special value here in the denominator that you can't divide by? And the answer is yes. The answer is zero, right? You can't divide something by zero, right? What's 15 divided by zero? I don't know. It's not zero, I'll tell you that. It's undefined, right? The question is, how many times does zero fit into 15? I don't know. It's zero. How many times can nothing fit into something? You might say nothing, but that doesn't make sense, right? Because it's nothing to begin with. So th this is undefined. Now, that's going to drive my process, okay? I'm going to take this down. I know that this whole denominator cannot be equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that denominator and set it equal to zero so I can find the values of x here that's going to result in an overall value of zero. All right. So now you have a quadratic. You know, how can you do this? Well, there's a few things you can do. One, you can use the program in your calculator that I created a video on that you can watch for three minutes and do this. Watch how cool this is. Ready? Program. You're going to love it. You execute your quadratic program. And you're going to write in your a value. Remember, a is the coefficient of the x squared term. It's a 1. b is going to be a negative 2. And c is going to be a negative 8. And hit enter, and boom, you got your x's, right? So x is going to equal, isn't that kind of cool? So x is going to equal 4 and what? Oh, boy. Woo! Okay, enough. Um, oh, enough, enough, enough. Okay. x is going to be equal to 4, and x will also be equal to negative 2. So when you x is 4 and when x is negative 2, this bad boy is going to go to 0. Okay, so these are problems. These are, these are going to be restrictions. Now, if you don't want to use the program, uh, but by the way, I suggest take a look in the description below because I'll leave you a link for that uh, video. Um, what you can do is do it the old-fashioned way, right? What two numbers multiply to negative 8 but yet add to negative 2? And you might say, oh, right, it's going to be a negative 4 and a positive 2. Okay, great. So you factored it. Then what you do is you take each of these factors, you set them equal to zero, right? This is old news now. And you solve for x. So here x is 4 and x is going to be equal to negative 2. And that's what we said it was going to be anyway. So those are the restrictions. So basically, there's no other restrictions on this. So you can say all real numbers, right? All reals, except for x being equal to 4 and x being equal to negative 2. Now, however you write this out, it doesn't matter, right? Interval notation, domain notation, whatever the, whatever it is. But that's how you would do it. Now, if you wanted to also use the calculator in a different way, what you can do is graph this thing, right? So do open parentheses, do x squared, x squared plus 4. Okay, great. Divided by then, open the parentheses again, do x squared uh, minus 2x 
they got to use those parentheses there, minus 8, um, because you want to take this whole numerator and divide it by the whole denominator. Without the parentheses, it's not going to come out right. And just hit graph. So, oh my God, this thing does a little crazy, right? This thing is crazy. So, but if you notice, there's some craziness happening at two values, right? The craziness is happening here at x being equal to negative 2, and here at x being equal to positive 4, okay? Right? Those are vertical asymptotes. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, but you can see the graph is going to trail off and go to infinity, basically, negative or positive, depending upon which way we're looking at it. And also, I realize I'm running out of breath. Time to start doing some cardio. Um, and uh, you can also then use the table function in the calculator. Hit second graph. And when you use your table, look. When x is negative 2, you get an error. When x is going to be equal to 4, you get an error. Okay? That's because it's undefined. The function's undefined when x is going to be equal to negative 2 and 4. And that's what we said over here. You see how many ways you can go about this? So many ways. Not really sure what happened. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I don't really know where I am right now. Anyway, this coffee is fantastic this morning. If you like the video, like, subscribe, maybe tell some of your classmates. Check out our channel because um, we have, I don't know, thousands of videos out there that help you through mathematics, chemistry, and physics as well. We solve specific problems because that's what you're going to see on your test. The best way to prepare for these types of science exams is to actually do problems. Don't waste your time reviewing your notes. You can spend a little bit of time there, but you really got to be actively solving problems. Okay? And if you get stuck, we walk you through it. That's the best way to learn these subjects and the fastest way to an A. Take care.